To put it lightly, Russia is a fascinating place. It is a country that has been bestowed upon with some of the most elaborate tales of folklore and mysticism ever seen in our shared history. Russia is a country steeped in an ever flowing and expansive tapestry of bizarre intrigue and whimsical magic, of a folklore history that has been shaped with hardships both physical and metaphysical, of a harsh and domineering landscape, and of an ancient magic that has long lingered. Truth be told, when we talk about Russian folklore, what we're really talking about is the shared culture of the Slavs. People, one that encompasses most stories found in other European folklore, but have their seeds sown here in Russian history. So, let's see what they're all about, shall we? Hello, horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host, Jack Finch, as today we curiously take a look at the top five most terrifying stories from Russian folklore. Roll the clip. For the curious amongst you, that clip was from the phenomenal 1979 film Stalker, written and directed by Andrei Tarkovsky, and based upon one of the most fantastic Russian novels ever written, The Mind-Bending Roadside Picnic, written by brothers Boris and Arkady Strogatsky back in 1972. And really, we're using both of those titles to highlight just how remarkable some Russian fiction actually is, inexplicably unique and bleak in its own interesting way, and more importantly, it is a style deeply rooted in Russian and Slavic folklore. So yeah, the more you know, really. Let's take a look at some of the best. Kicking off at number five, the coffin lid. And truth be told, most of what we know in modern literature about the many twisting tales of Russian folklore comes from a writer by the name of Alexander Afanasyev, who was essentially both the Brothers Grimm and Aesop rolled into one. His book, Russian Folk Tales, published between 1855 and 1863, took some of the greatest Slavonic fairy tales and folk stories and compiled them for a wider audience. This one, the coffin lid, is perhaps one of the most bizarre and calamitous. As it goes, one night a peasant was travelling down a road late throughout the evening in his horse drawn carriage. Quickly, the sky grew dark and so the peasant decided to pull into a field before a church and lay down for the night. Little did he know but he had fallen asleep on top of a grave and throughout the night the earth rumbled beneath him, the coffin lid slipped open and a corpse emerged covered in a white shroud. It shot up from the dirt with its coffin lid clutched in its bony hand, ran out of the cemetery gates without a word and propped the lid just before the gate. Seizing the opportunity, the peasant grabbed hold of the coffin lid and hid it inside his telega, his horse-drawn wagon, as he had heard it was of great power to steal from the dead. Very soon though, the corpse returned and it was furious to find that its coffin lid was missing. It raged throughout the cemetery and came across the peasant, where it furiously demanded for it back. Give me my coffin lid or I will smash you to atoms, it said. The peasant the peasant wasn't deterred though and he demanded to know where the corpse had been before he did so. I've been to the village, it said, and I've cut the throats of two young lads in their sleep. Well, seizing the opportunity to impress the village, the peasant declared that he would only give the coffin lid back if the corpse revealed its secrets and let him know how to revive the two young boys. And so he did. The corpse told him to take a corner of his shroud and when he comes to the house of the young lads, scatter hot sparks into a pot, burn the corner of the shroud, close the door and then waft the smoke throughout the room. Well. That's exactly what he did, and when morning broke, the peasant had made his way into the village as the boy's parents were shrieking and crying in the street. Do not fear, he said, I can revive them. And so he did what the corpse instructed, and the young lads stirred back to life. Well, in some stories, the villagers are so astounded that they herald the peasant as some hero. They race to the cemetery, they dig up the corpse's body and stake its heart on an oak spike so it cannot rise and kill again. In others, though, the villagers see the peasant as a necromancer, and they hang him for conspiring with the dead. It's a fine line to walk, I guess. Swinging in at number four, Rasalka Week. Okay, what's folklore without some terrifying mythical creatures, right? Truth be told, in Slavic mythology, the Rasalkai are some of the most horrifying and monstrous versions of the archetypal water spirit of legend, and it goes without saying that they've been pretty important. You see, folklore, if anything, serves as a shared cautionary tale for any given society. If you're trying to keep the village youngsters from frolicking too close to dangerous waters, it's probably best that you let them know devious aquatic creatures frolic there too. Thus, just like the Celtic mermaids and Greek sirens of legend, we we have the Rasalka, originating from a Slavic pagan tradition where these young female entities were once worshipped as symbols of fertility. As time went on though, the traditional Rasalki became images of young women dying violent deaths. Sometimes it was murder, sometimes suicide, sometimes accidental death by drowning. Either way, they were transformed from being ambivalent beings of folklore to terrifying, violent, revenge-seeking, maligned entities. 
Rightly so, really, because in my book, they were certainly justified in doing so. However, all of this malignant energy converges in a specific period of the Russian folklore calendar, Rusalka Week. And it's probably important that we note that unlike the fishtail mermaids of legend, these particular entities aren't bound to bodies of water alone. Yeah, the Rusalkai have legs and they can freely walk on land for one week of the year specifically. At the beginning of each and every summer, around the first week of June, Slavic culture celebrate what is known as Rusalkai Week. You see, during this time, swimming in any kind of body of water is absolutely forbidden, as it will almost certainly mean a violent and painful death at the hands of the Rusalka. During this time, the Rusalka are believed to come ashore to play in the weeping willows and swing between birch branches as they gather en masse to perform circle dances under moonlight. As the legend goes, any passerby who should have the misfortune of witnessing one of these circle dances is then forced to dance with them until they die, driven to madness and exhaustion exhaustion as the Rusalkai revel in the moonlight. Yeah, what a way to go, eh? Next up at number three, the Brozhnya. And talking of terrifying bodies of water, what is any kind of folklore without having a terrifying lake monster? Strangely enough though, compared to Nessie, the Brozhnya, also known as the Brozno Dragon, has had far more coverage than most others. The Brozno Dragon is a lake monster of Russian folklore said to inhabit Lake Brozno, a huge body of water near Andropyol in western Russia. Now, whilst many of these legends are wide and varied, tales of the Brozhnya have been recorded in oral tradition since as far back as the 13th century. You see, in modern times, many people treat the existence of the Brozhnya skeptically and say that more than likely it is a mutant beaver or some kind of 100 year old giant pike, which I mean, Pretty terrifying either way. Others claim that it is a conglomerate of wild boars or elk that cross the lake from time to time and leave chaos in their wake. But you see, that doesn't seem to fly with some of the historical references of the Brozhnya. You see, back in the 13th century, rumors of a strange giant creature that lived at the bottom of Lake Brozno were so prolific that they somehow managed to scare an entire army on multiple occasions actually. But the most remarkable of them all was the Tatar Mongol army, a horde of Turkish warriors that were headed straight for the Russian city of Novgorod sometime around the early 13th century. Their leader Batu Khan stopped to rest and war his troops on the side of Lake Brozno early one evening. As was expected, his horses were sent down to the lake to water, but before they knew it, a huge roaring creature emerged from the water, mercilessly devouring both horses and soldiers alike, slaughtering them by their hundreds. Well, whatever happened, it worked, because it is recorded in numerous historical texts that the Batu Khan's troops were so terrified that they turned back and Novgorod was saved. Whatever the truth of the Brozhnya, it seems that throughout history, folklore has told a similar tale of some sort of terrifying creature lurking in the waters at the bottom of Lake Brozno. Whatever it is, is anyone's guess, but I'm certainly not the one to find out. Coming in at number two, the tale of Alexander of Macedon. And my favourite facet of folklore is when history meets myth and legend, because more often than not, what we're left with is this, a phenomenal cautionary tale steeped in mysticism and legend that may also have ties to a shared historical truth. This particular folktale is a retelling of Alexander and the Iron Gates, one that has been passed down through tradition by Slavic culture and tells a tale of a mysterious people of legend, Gog and Magog. Now, the truth of who these people were is unclear at best, and we may never truly know, as folklore has a habit of switching perspectives as time goes by. Gog and Magog were thought at first to be the Romans and their emperor, then they were the Goths, then the Scythians, the Amazons, the Huns. However they were, they faced Alexander of Macedon, and they were imprisoned behind an impossibly large wall. That remains the same. As the legend goes, so long ago that neither our grandfathers, nor great-grandfathers, nor our great-great-great grandfathers can recollect it, there was a mighty king, Alexander of Macedon. This Tsar was one of the greatest knights of all knights that ever were, and no champion of earth could ever conquer him. You see, Alexander of Macedon loved warfare, and his army consisted entirely of knights. Whoever he would war with, he would conquer, and he numbered under his sway all the kings of the earth. He went so far that soon he found himself at the edge of the world, where he discovered such peoples that even he, however bold he was himself, felt afraid of them. They were ferocious folk, fierce folk who ate men alive. They were folk that had only 
one eye and that eye was on the forehead. Folks with three eyes, with three legs and who ran as fast as an arrow darts from the bow. They were the Gogs and Magogs and no matter what Alexander did, the wild people would run from him and disperse into thickets or deep beneath mountains. They were able to hide themselves forever against Alexander of Macedon and so, fearing that they would destroy him one day, he rolled one mountain over them and then another like a roof. And on the arch he placed trumpets so that when the wind blew, a fearsome roar was raised into the skies and the Gogs and Magogs would know that evidently, Alexander of Macedon must still be alive. Now this is obviously an allegory for Alexander the Great and a mysterious historical society that could be any number of people, but I mean, that's just folklore in action right there. And it's awesome. And finally, coming in at number one spot, the language of the birds. And you know what? I just love this story, so I'm just gonna dive right in. As the legend goes, in an ancient city, there was a merchant and his wife, and their son, a young boy named Vasily, who was wise beyond his years. One day, the three of them were lunching together, and in a cage, there was a nightingale singing so woefully that the merchant father could not bear it. The father said, if there was ever a man who could tell me what doom the nightingale is foreboding, I should like to meet him. The young boy then eyed his father and said, I know what the nightingale sings, only I'm afraid to speak of it. Speak it openly, said the mother and father, and then, with tears in his eyes, the young boy Vasily told his mother and father that the nightingale is foretelling that a time and a season is coming where you will be my servants. You, my father, will draw me water, and you, my mother, will give me the towel to wipe my face and hands and eyes. Well, this made his mother and father very angry, and so one night they decided to get rid of their own child. They built him a little boat, and in the dark of night, they put the sleeping boy into it and let it sail out into the open sea. Well, luckily for the boy, as he sailed off into the night, the nightingale flew from its cage, and it landed by the boy's side. The next morning, the young Vasily was picked up by a ship, where the captain of the ship quickly grew fond of him and the strange small bird that had perched itself on his shoulder. The young boy told the master of ships of a wild storm about to hit the harbour that evening, and that he should draw in his sails and take cover. He didn't listen to the young boy though, and so his mast was destroyed entirely. It took many days to repair, and as they were about to leave once more, Vasily told the captain that the nightingale had foretold 12 bold pirate ships that would ambush them out in the harbour. And this time, the master of ships believed the boy and stayed behind before giving sail. Shortly afterwards, 12 pirate ships came sailing across the shore, and yet they were safe in the harbour. From then on, wherever the young boy Vasily would go, he would speak the truth of what the nightingale told him, and whoever believed him would find good fortune, and whoever would laugh at him or be fearful of his prophecy would find themselves suffering great tragedies shortly afterward. Well, eventually, after many years of roaming the world alongside his nightingale, soon Vasily found himself a fully grown man, and he had married his way up through the royal courts of the land, where he had inherited half a kingdom as a dowry. One day, as he journeyed as a royal emissary to a familiar land, he found himself in a lavish city as its honoured guest. As he woke, he informed the chamberlain that he wished to wash for the morning, and so two figures entered the chamber, one to draw him water, and one to towel him as he washed. They were both his father and his mother, and when they saw their son, they wept at the sight of him. They had been broken by back-breaking labour ever since they had abandoned him all those years before. The nightingale sang, and Vasily took them both back with him to his own city, where they lived a good life for the rest of their days. Happy endings, guys. They're rare, so we've really got to take them when we can. Well, there we have it, guys. That list for the top five most terrifying stories from Russian folklore. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Disagree? Have any more to add? Then let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Before we depart from today's video, though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments over the past few days. Midnight Warlock says, You guys should do a video on Worm the Web Novel. There are a whole lot of horrifying things in that universe. Love your videos, guys. Peace out and much love. Oh, dude, Midnight Warlock, my friend. I absolutely adore Worm and Ward and the whole Power Human cycle, but holy shit, dude. I don't even think that I could make a dent in that series, really. That one's for all of you to discover yourselves. You can't condense something like that. You just can't. It's not fair to anyone. But it's also awesome, so thank you very much, Midnight Warlock, for letting us all know. Well, there we have it. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy. <laughs>